Imperial Magistrate reached a verdict. I have guilty or innocent. Spare me this mockery of justice. Um, so, action so. comics. Fifty-two. <laughs> Superman, yeah. volume one. Uh, Superman, one the, yeah, Superman and the Men of Steel. I don't know who the Men of Steel are, based on what, what I read. But oh, is that that's the name of the? the oh well, no, it's because uh, because there you know there's that uh, cyborg guy, and Brainiac. They're all and made of steel. steel. Actual steel. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's a, that's a shitty title. Holy shit. Yeah. It's um, not great. Yeah, this was November uh, 2011 and uh, through to June of 2012. So long ago. Yeah, so this uh, is a big old graphic novel. I got fired up because I found it in like a bargain store and I uh, fired off a message to you. Because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we all, I think, uh, I don't know about you, but I feel like you and I and Chris all hold Grant Morrison in a kind of a high regard. Very For sure, man. Rarely yep. does he do, uh, you know, does he not put his own real full flavor into something and just do sort of a workman book? And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what to report here other than he did himself a workman book here, kind of a yeah. Chuck Dixon special. Like, a... <laughs> I don't know if it's, there's still, um, what's strange about it is there's, you know, it's a Grant Morrison book with Regs, Morales, and uh, Art generally, and then the Kuberts. I forget which one. Andy, Adam, don't care. Yeah, I think it's uh, Andy. Right. And uh, so anyway, it's, it's, it is m- like Morrison's work in that it's got – it jumps around a lot. Uh, he uses ellipsis um, to, to kind of confusing effect, but, you know, for the most part, not confusing, but, it, you know, it can be a little jostling if you're not used to it. And then, uh, yeah, the story's pretty, pretty by the number Superman. Yeah. Um, um, which I guess it's supposed to be a first issue. So, you know, it's the first arc of, of supposedly relaunching DC Comics at the time, which is such a stupid fucking affectation. Uh, man, what a anyway. waste of everybody's. You know, okay, like I get, I get the idea. I get the idea of rebooting a book. I like the yeah. idea of rebooting a book. I like, like, I like twisting the origin story a little bit, which he did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, you got like a bit more of a little dip into Krypton. You got sort of an alternate version of the of the. It was mostly true to to the origin. You yeah, know? but you get a different Mon Pa Kent. And you do get a different bit of crypt- Krypton, like like it is. A, it's everything that you expect the story to be, and yet it's you know it's still a little Grant Morrison-y. Like you can, it it still does feel like him. But I kept waiting, and I remember because I bought these issues when they were coming out, and and like I had said to you in another conversation, like about his Batman run, I didn't really care for it early on, but like around his seventh or eighth issue into the series, something happened. You know, like I I don't even remember what it was. And I was like, holy fuck, this is amazing. And it, it just never happened with this book. Um, except for, actually... Oh, it wasn't the, bad. No, the issue that comes after this, issue nine. Issue nine I hold dear to my heart as, a, as like sort of an amazing meditation upon the concept of Superman. But for the rest of it, um, you know, I was, it was a real disappointment. Anyway, you were going to say. Yeah, like Rags Morales was really neat. Um he's i don't know he's kind of like he, he's he's cool he's really like a bubbly kind of action you know guy well he he's so good they uh brent anderson pitch hit for him in a couple of the issues and i bet you didn't even notice i didn't notice you're right uh, actually yeah um so so anyway yeah yeah he's he's real great and he he does um character emotional expression very well like his yeah his, big on his figures emotion yeah and stuff yeah and, and and like there were some really creepy things like uh you know those old creepy robots that came out and, and when like whatever it was krypton or, or it was i don't know I don't, I don't even know what i read here yeah well it's basically brainiac attacks and lex luther is yeah, like Brainiac, and... uh, the, the little twist on the story was that the AI programmed in Clark's shuttle was was Brainiac or whatever, right? Oh, no, no. Uh, no. 
that's I don't know. I, I'm not sure what where Brainiac comes from exactly, but he's kind of like a virus that takes over the internet of various worlds. Um, and the shuttle, yeah, that's actually the time travel bit. I can see how you'd be confused about that. So, oh yeah, there was like that dip kind of after that after the first little story arc with the military yeah. guy, where they kind of like did the Krypton uh, sort of uh, story. Yeah, uh, um, you know the, the, the Legion of Superheroes song or whatever. But they with with uh, the actual like with uh, Cal El and stuff. But mm-hmm. he he even I, here I'm trying to find it. But he actually says that about the shuttle. Um, he said. Oh, wait, he says that it's going to have Brainiac in it? Yeah. Oh, oh here. You're actually, you're yeah, right. I remember we built Brainiac. It together, you and I, it has a super luminal drive on board, Brainiac AI. Right, right, right. So that's when I sort of doubled back and I thought, oh, that's like he spun the Kryptonian sort of, you know, history mm-hmm. and origin story into that first arc. Like, or sort of back. But that's a normal the, thing to do, too. Um, to have like that's from the Superman cartoon to have Brainiac to be uh, the the Internet of Krypton. Um, it's just funny how Morrison's like interweaving all the various uh, you know elements or, or or versions of Superman. Well, I uh, like I, I like that that little spin, and I liked the mm-hmm. I liked the military officer with the metallo suit mm-hmm. kind of uh, that got taken over by the Kryptonian Internet. And then um, I like that Brainiac is not just like I'm Brainiac because that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, who, this bra- why, what? This is a good way to bring it, bring it all about, you know. Um, yeah. and, and it's more clever than a standard Superman story, so I, I shouldn't be hating. I just I think that there's like a like you say there's like a grandeur you expect from Grant Morrison that never really like came to play here. It was just well, like, oh, that's slightly better than a normal shitty superman <laughs> <laughs> it was it was because of all-star superman you know really like that you know like probably the best superman story ever um and and you're like oh you know like the guy who wrote the best superman story ever he's gonna give us a fucking awesome superman and 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 this just you know it was it you know it was above average it was pretty good and and also it it you know and it does that incorporation of you know like the incorporate and transcend thing that that morrison likes to do like when superman's holding that billionaire over the over the edge of a building you know that glenn morgan guy and basically like terrorizing him and running around the city like a madman like that's that's what the original superman comic like an action comics number one like that's what superman was like uh he he was like sort of a he would beat up on on you know um billionaires and and mob bosses and people who beat their wife uh you know he he was a real like rampaging um crusader and so it's cool to see superman like that uh and then and then also sort of growing out of that but i honestly i don't think he should have ever grown out of that <laughs> that's a much cooler superman to me yeah i just um i don't know i i, I i'm i'm fussy with superman stories and i don't mm-hmm. know that i've read a lot of good ones uh, like, yeah, like we, one, ones that I get really excited about. Um, mm-hmm. I, I even like, to be honest with you, like semi memorable ones. I even sort of like that Jim Lee one with uh, Brian Azzarello, like better than some of the other ones. And, and I know that was shit, but the art was so good. And the yeah. one was kind of <laughs> neat. And yeah. um, I, it was well, six in I my memory. It's... I yeah, know. I bet it's I bet it's better. I wanted us to actually read it relatively soon, like sometime in the new year, because uh, I, you know, it's Brian Azzarello. I I bet it's uh, something about it is better than than maybe we remember. Uh, and also, if we were going to look at Superman comics, I'd I'd kind of I w- I'd kind of want to look at some Roger Stern comics from like early '80s, and then also Jeff Johns comics uh, with Gary Frank. That's some pretty good Superman stuff, and I think he did some. He even had um, Richard Donner co-write some of the issues, which is Jeff weird. Johns, Jeff Johns is always like, and I, I don't know that I'm ever like disappointed when I do Jeff Johns either, really. Yeah. Like, but the yeah. Um, yeah, this was just like I don't know. It's just I mean, and I I think that's a Superman thing though too. Like again, like we all you know, if anybody listens to this podcast, there's a couple guys, but uh, I I like raunchy stuff. 
I like gore. I like violence. I like I like uh, splatter stuff. I like uh, you know grotesque weird stuff. Um, and 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 I'm never gonna get that out of Superman. I know That's that. true. Um, and I and I you know you, there's a lot of standard fare out there. Like I like a standard fare Batman story. I, I but Superman, I just feel like there's just something so like American about him just going to work every day and working extra hard to be like a working man and and just it's fucking like it just ends up being like sort of like almost like it's like Spider Man with like less personality. It's just, uh, it's just tiring. <laughs> so. I think it, I think it's even worse than that because, like, um, I know I know nowadays it's common for Clark Kent to to get with Lois Lane, but if you think about the, like, even even Peter Parker got more pussy than than Clark Kent, you know, like, uh, yeah, I didn't you know, think so you were gonna go there. <laughs> Uh, uh, and yeah, so like he, he's, he works, you know, he's doubly a loser and he works harder than Peter Parker did. Oh, uh, you know, the stakes harder, are a little higher for Parker. harder than anybody in the free world. He just gets yeah. beat up, banged up. There's nothing in it for him. There's no money in it for him. His job actually sucks. And he's just kind of like, I don't know, man, like you say, he just, he's kind of like putters around and like, it's more powerful than anyone on the planet and just kind of like. Is like a cock all the time. <laughs> I do like that uh, in this in this version though. They like the cops are hassling him. You know, like he's he's a real sort of dissident uh, in in Grant Morrison's early version. And again, that's going to disappear so quickly. And and uh, but you know he's he's writing he's writing um, exposés on people and and shit like that. And like people are like if he wasn't Superman, they would have beat the shit out of him. Uh, and and you know taught him a lesson, um, but he he's still kind of a schlub while he's doing it. So it's I don't know. Again, yeah, Grant I, I knows did, how to yeah, do it. exactly. Grant Grant knows how to do it, and he did his spins, man. He did his spins like he had him arguing with the cops. But then it's like I feel like I've seen Spider Man in that scenario. I, I feel like I've seen Batman in that scenario, and, and it's all been done cooler. Oh, you it know, probably so. that's a real Peter Parker thing, actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, like okay, one. Peter Parker's a photojournalist, but you can imagine Peter Parker like zinging people, like people giving him a hard time. He'd he'd fucking he'd razz him. He'd he'd stand up to them with comedy, and and basically that's what this Clark Kent does. He acts like Peter Parker. Um, oh, or man. okay, you know I I know you're not in the Straczynski thing, right? We're not going to even start start getting fired <laughs> up about Straczynski. <laughs> not going to yeah. go there. But do, yeah. do, like the the back in black was the one where spy, where Peter was like the old beat up uh, school. He was an old beat up university or high school teacher or whatever. High school, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yep. went after Aunt May, and he finally snapped, went straight into the prison, took his mask off, and beat the shit out of the kingpin in front of all the inmates. Good. That's. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's stupid. That's such a like, non Spider Man thing to do. Awesome, like, though, you know, yeah. like, when when does Superman do that? You know, I need a story about Superman snapping. But that's like, well, and I think that's why we like that red glass story, you know, where he basically kills everyone. We're like, finally, <laughs> fuck. That's right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, like. It, it, you are right, though. Like, a, like you, you can have your bog standard Spider-Man story, your bog standard Batman story, and you're going to get some, theoretically something grotesque and bizarre out of those stories because they're both creepy uh, figures of the night. Um, whereas, yeah, yeah, like uh, you can do some yeah. underbelly stuff, you can do some murders and stuff like that, and and uh, you know, and have your your guys stumble upon that, you know, in the night and stuff, right? Yeah. The uh, yeah, but then if Superman comes across like this, a scene from Seven, um, it's not like it doesn't fit. You know, he's too he's too large. It's like it, it would be like Zeus showing up, and you're like, well, what's the dra- <laughs> what, what's the drama in this? You know, like other than for him to like yeah. shake his head and, and be concerned about the state of humanity, um, and uh, yeah. What's he going to do? Track the guy down to his basement somewhere and cut him in half with his laser vision? You're not going to get that. No. That's reserved for the boys. Right? Yeah, actually, I, I just watched at the beginning of the first episode of season two uh, <laughs> when uh, the Homelander, he, you know, he, he goes to that warehouse and does exactly what you just described. Just like, I think it was the first episode. 
um, he, you know, all those those uh, our soldiers are about to go inside a building, and he, you know, I'll take it from here, guys. You're the real heroes. <laughs> <laughs> that actor's really channeling that shit i don't know man mm-hmm. he's good <laughs> yeah i think everybody does a good job of the characters um i don't know if that's actually well i haven't watched enough to know whether or not i have any sort of problem but this is getting you know super off topic but i think it's because i've been looking at transmet comics again and thinking about Derek robertson and uh you know his 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 work is so cartoony uh and and the show it it can't be cartoony like that you know it can be kind of goofy and and it can push the you know trying to get into that but as long as it's live like live action television i think there's going to be you know there's there's something from the original mix missing but i don't know that's not to say that the show sucks or anything but yeah and and, and there is there's like i mean there's um it's there's something papered over a little bit right cuz it it needs to it needs to be written in a different way Mm-hmm. Be palatable. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Um, but I mean, like, man, sometimes they they pull out a splatter scene or or something comes right off the page mm-hmm. that you're like, oh my god, like I wouldn't, I would never have thought that that would be okay to, to <laughs> push past some producers, and they did it, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, it's because it's on fucking it's Bezos, man. Like, you want me to what, drop who, a spoiler who's... on you? Oh yeah, it's not going to bother me. Go ahead, well, please. Rec- they had to read the very recent episode. They had the lamplighter. Okay. And they they kidnapped. They kind of kidnapped him. He kind of went voluntarily with them. He's oh, all sorry. Who, what, who's he an al- an an analog of? What what kind of superhero is he? Green Lantern. Green Lantern, of course. He okay. torched. He torched some children uh, okay. that were part of uh, Butcher's sort of CIA woman's kids mm. w- when they were younger heroes or whatever. And uh, then he kind of went into into like obscurity, and the company was using him for some other shit, whatever. Um, right. But uh, he's basically played by the dude that played Iceman, which is kind of hilarious. Um, but he's basically just like a fire elemental sort of guy. Um, okay. And he uh, he there's just this scene where they have him and Huey sitting on the couch, and he's forcing Huey to watch like like parody porn of of the superheroes. <laughs> and, and they went they literally went full out like they're sitting there watching this grotesque like parody porn and then it, it's uh it's just yeah. like a, purely absurd and and it, it i was stunned that they went ahead with it so you can like like they they show you what's on the screen yeah. of the parody oh, porn? yeah of course yeah oh that's awesome what um, that's, cool. I, that's that's episode five recently and i was i was shocked right. i i didn't i didn't i don't know there were some things in that episode and, and and in recent episodes that like the only thing is i mean they're doing a lot of narrative and stuff and they're pushing story through so it's 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 slow um slow progression and stuff so sometimes you only get that little shocker once or twice in an episode but which is probably for the best, you know. Um, True. Yeah. Yeah. Like getting back to what you said, it's, it has to be palatable. It can't actually be the boys, because because um, it's a monthly experience. If when you when you're reading the comics, and so you know more, you can handle more constant zaniness or or fucking ultra violence or whatever. But <laughs> well, uh, I don't know anything anything about action comics left. Um, mm, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, and, and it was such a, and like I said, it was just a disappointment. Um, to and and then like and again, I bought all the fucking issues, and and it wrapped up fine, you know, it's like just it. Just such a bulky, like such a bulky creative team to have to yeah. have that amount to a meh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's real garbage. And but I, you know, they were under. I I would imagine he's under a lot of restraints at that point. You know, like. Keep it small, Grant. You know, oh, something like that. Well, that he's, he's probably has some sort of mandate. When New New Fifty Two was like such a big editorial thing, and they were mixing, they were they were blending characters and and rebooting the ages of characters and doing like a full a full rework of the of this the setup, like or like yeah, you know, whatever. So yeah, uh, yeah. I'm sure that they had uh, like a very dictated uh, sort of like pace and stuff for the books, even maybe plots and stuff. 
Yeah, you don't. It's not until DC starts to decide that what they were doing was terrible fucking idea that you see Grant come back, if I remember correctly. Like he does the action comics thing and then he leaves for a while and then he comes back from multiversity. But if, but by then, uh, DC, yeah, DC had already realized its mistake. Like we, this was stupid. People don't buy us for fresh new looks. Like we're, you know, we're Grandpa's old mobile, Oldsmobile. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. All right. Well, fuck that book. What? Do, well, actually, what? What do you? What's your grade? Let's on end this thing? off on a grade. Um, I guess I give it a B. Yeah. After all that First. shit talk, yeah, it's a B. <laughs> That's, that's pretty B good. minus. B minus. I don't know. I'll give it a B. It had some solid bits. Uh, yeah, I kind of like. Yeah. I, I came to, like rereading it. I kind of like scrawny Superman. I, I I was happy to see him go. I, I don't want to like keep a scrawny Superman, but yeah, no. Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? One second. I'm just gonna pause. Now all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. Yeah.